the sleep. On top of that, you have Queen of Pain and Faceless Void Blinker course that can ignore Haunt to a sense by just leaping away from the Spectre illusion. And Disruptor is actually another great counter because you can glimpse back the Spectre, you can glimpse back Bad Rider, and you can purge off illusions right away with Glimpse as well. Glimpse, if you use it on a Haunt illusion, it just dies. And uh, yeah, it just seems like they kind of picked into counter, and they also banned Necrolite, which Ancient Apparition does an amazing job of card countering. Like Necro versus AA is just unfair, and they decided to ban him up because Necro is decent against Spectre, but it wouldn't have been against their lineup with the Bad Rider and Spectre. So interesting picks and bans. I would favor Pain Gaming a bit, but Pain Gaming's lineup requires execution, and it also requires their course to. Co Coordinate the farm very carefully. Remaining. Like the void can't steal farm from the Naga, and the Queen of Pain can't steal Naga stacks because this Naga's gonna have remaining. time getting back in the game after she dies. Yeah. So for now, it's kind of just gonna be more like. That, does that mean they need to make some space here? Like, would you look for your supports to even make space, or is the disruptor and Rubik's primary goal like ensure that the lanes are stable enough, and then stack up the jungle for these guys? Is is that the primary goal for this? I think the biggest concern here is that they don't they just don't give Nyx too much, you know. As mentioned, like they're they're usually decent at zoning out targets. They're not the best roamers that duo combo. They certainly can. They have enough right click and disable to just right click down targets with Thunderstorm and pull the target back if they want to. But the level of co commitment they they have to put in just for those kills here against the lineup of Nyx, especially against like a potential Earthshaker shutdown from the Fisher from a distance. Not sure if it's worth it. So I think they just want to commit to Batrider to zone him out of the lane and force him to go into the jungle. And then they can begin walking around a little bit as soon as Queen of Pain gets levels up and possibly a nice rune. As it stands, you know, if they stay alive in their lanes, this game goes pretty even until one team actually takes a fight in the tower. And that's when either Naga gets super big with Radiance and just can no longer be shut down, <laughs> or Spectre and Razor get so big that they can force any towers and still force a team fight. Interesting thing just to note space. too, because I um I flagged it again. The fact we have uh, alias people up there, uh, they've actually changed their roster pain gaming, because I'm like I, I don't recognize these players' names, and uh, especially uh, Nemsui, which is actually now someone completely different. He's actually because he was the man doing the draft. That's so I'm like, who the hell is this? His name is Pada. Now, I personally don't know him. Uh, so like Pada, but Pada. Yeah, but Pada. Uh, right. He's he's replacing Nedbone. So Nedbone was part of their official, oh, official roster. Oh, Pain Pada? Yeah. Okay, that guy, I, I heard stories about him. He's like the he's like the richest person on Dota 2. Really? Inventory-wise. Apparently his inventory is worth like 10,000. Whoa, really? Yeah, yeah. He's Apparently he's got like the biggest collection of queries and stuff. I remember he actually sold, um, he sold the courier for like $40,000? Holy crap. You yeah, can't, yeah, you can't do that really through the Steam store. That's outside the Steam store if you're doing that kind of transaction. Yeah, yeah, and then And then what happened was Valve actually added the ability to, I guess, like, modify gems or something. So you could actually get the effect that he had exclusively. So the value of that courier of the person who bought it dropped by, like, 60% <laughs> right in the, within the week. So what a that, was, that was something. Maybe yeah. that's the reason too why they why their board is completely pimped. What is this thing? Worthy tribute. Oh gosh! <laughs> what is that Going thing? Off right off the bat, that's a I, clockwork. Yeah, it, it's it's a clockwork ward. But I'm like, I, I I've never seen that. I've oh my never gosh, seen that ward. So Look at that thing. Well, why doesn't it tell me? You, you can never check and see what ward it is. Hey, uh, she Volvo, please fix. Anyway, back to our lanes. Um, well, that ward is really freaking cool. Uh, oh, Toby. Is they have the same thing for sentries? No, it's just a, a basic ar like arrow in the, f in the uh, feather, feather in the cap kind of thing. Um, so, middle lane, we have new player uh, going up against TC. Uh, bottom lane, we'll have IX Mike. Uh, he'll be the bat rider going up against the Queen of Pain. And then it's an Not aggro so tri lane far. coming out here from Pain with the Naga as the core part of it. Baja Rubik's not going to get a telekinesis tele grab, but it is going to make sure that Oosh, who is going to be the uh, Spectre and the number one role here for Sneaky Nick's Assassins, gets very little to no space. YB will be supporting him as the Earthshaker, while Fluff and stuff already starts prep prep prepping up some stacks for the Sneaky Nick's Assassins boys. Oh my gosh. I, I just realized, but I, I hate it when teams do this. I can't emphasize enough that this Void Razor matchup favors Razor tenfold like it's this void hero is actually so useless at the mid lane against razor that even if you time walk away from the link 
after you hit level 6, you apply no kill pressure, you don't take rune control, you don't push out the wave, it becomes extremely obvious when you leave the lane to land a chrono kill. It, it's like, it sets yourself up for a loss, that's what it does. And I, I can't wait till teams realize this, because this void mid against Razor, I'm pretty sure it has like a 0% competitive win rate. So why wouldn't she just run the Queen of Pain up against the Razor yeah, instead? Yeah, and you, you can actually you... run the void against the Batrider, it's kind of like sacking two heroes. And then you run the Queen of Pain against the Razor. You can actually counter push against the Razor, although the Razor still wins because his nuke is better. Mm -hmm. But Queen of Pain can actually control runes and do something about it. This Void Hero, he leaps and... Okay, he didn't even leap, so he's going to lose all his damage. He's going to have presence in the mid lane. He's going to get levels. He's, they basically got like two, three position heroes this game. Oh, I, I can't. I, I hate it when I see this, honestly. I hate There's it. There's also the impression. other option. I'm fairly certain Universe has proved that this can work as well. You could have just run the Void off lane. Are you going up against a Spectre on the safe lane? Another Shaker who can't trap you in an Ancient Apparition that can't control you either. You should be able to get a lot of experience on the off lane. But instead, yeah. like, instead of like running a Naga on the bottom lane, the Quap in the mid, and then the Void in the off, if you're really worried about him, you just bring in some extra support. Now, 40R, he's, yeah, he's getting bumped up by the Invis Whitebeard. And he's realizing too there's a problem there. But because they, uh, actually, they had Observer Wars, they would have seen it. Now, Fissure, Whitebeard was considering the throw. It's like mm -hmm. they actually saw him for a moment when they turned. Did this? Did the vision range of the T1 towers get improved? I know the the fortresses did. But was, was I don't there any modification? So. I don't think there was any difference in the sentry move. Uh, the orange player actually pinged it out, and I think you did mention it because Wipeer was blocking him up in the invis, so I'm sure they were aware that yeah. something was about to come, and they were getting pushed on with the creep wave, so it's fine. There's the, there's going to be no kills in this trial. Lane. Both both cores are so tanky. And it would have been better with the Void, Denied. but Pain got greedy thinking that they have better support so they can fight the combo. Look at the void this is really the not mid. the best solution. The Void in the mid, it's 20 for four, it's 2014 up against a 2-3. He is getting brutalized. Now top lane, we have a crack over Oosh. White Pip, he's waiting for the Fissure to catch out two heroes. He's not 100% sure if he can get oh a block for it, and he, he never even threw it. Long. He would try to wait a little bit too long. Now he's up to beat the T1 tower. The glimpse will drag him a long way back. That was level one, but they were so close anyway, they'll turn one into two on this safe flame for the Sneaking Assassins. This is not the start they were searching for at mm -hmm. all. Honestly, I would still say everything's okay for them. And the only thing that would really hurt them is, is if this Naga Siren gets mana boots. <laughs> if this Naga Siren gets mana boots, I would be very impressed by Pain. There's some aggression coming out now, but I'm not sure if they will secure a kill. Looks uh, like Rubik is trapped, so he oh, oh. He's, not, he's not fully locked in, but the oh, whole thing will so still close. trigger. Which allows yeah. Spectre to get the last hit. You know what? Watching him flounder back and forth for just a moment, I think he, re I think he thought he was blocked in. And it almost looked like he was, because that flag is in the way. That banner. Yeah. Oh. But there's, there's a small little gap where you can walk through that. Uh, I yeah. also want to just uh, point out one big thing about how much Bat Rider is so freaking good during this version. And um, the primary thing is, like, one, it can run this off flame bottle without having to waste the time of the courier. Because he's always able to get that rune in the bottom. With Firefly, you can guarantee yourself every two minutes you'll be picking up a bottle, uh, bottle charge. Uh, yeah. be, it, be it a bonus rune or be it in the bounty, it doesn't really matter. So you don't have to really go into your jungle the entire time. And because of that too, you're able to power level your farm up. Now Baja's gonna walk into him, but this is a level three Rubik going up against a Bat Rider. The Sting will be there, but Firefly's a Valve for IX Mike 88. So he'll be able to fly yeah. himself away from this. He's still fairly injured, but this just flags up for Sneaking Assassins on the top lane. The, the supports are no longer up there. So it's a lot easier for them on their lane. Yeah, man. I feel so bad for Ice Frog Toby. Ever since he made the Firefly changes and buffed the Bat Rider turn rate and stuff, and Ever since he's been getting religiously picked after the Magnus patch, mm -hmm. you know, he's he's scratching his head at every, every patch thinking what he can do to nerf this hero, but, I mean, he, he's got only himself to blame. He, the he design of the hero is too good. With, with the way bottles now function, this guy is, is the boss. Yeah, like, the way the rose every was patch designed, always he's the boss. manages to stay relevant, for sure. I mean, this hero, like, just compare him to a Void, which is an, arguably another one of the best three-position heroes. Like, this hero doesn't care about terrains. <laughs> Sorry. He farms non-stop, and what's going on? This Void! <laughs> he gets hit by oh, a yeah, plasma yeah, yeah. field. There's not even a chance for him to backtrack because he went a 3-0-1 build. Uh, I feel so sorry for him. Like, you see the, you see the Salve in TC's inventory? Like, I almost feel like TC should just drop it on the floor and say, Look, you're having a real hard time here. 
let me help you out, buddy. Like some something of that sort. Just this is not working out for this void, man. No, it's not. It really, really isn't. There was uh, a moment when uh, next to SNA were moving up to the top lane. They really wanted to try and get that fissure block off, but with the disruptor as well as the Rubik is going to cause a lot of problems for that. So the observer ward down. Now they see the supports just sitting there next to the tower. Now this is wasted time for pain. It really is, because Batrider is still finding a lot of farm. Again, Ix Mai is going to be doing this. He grabs the creep wave, he fireflies, and he farms up not only uh, like the creep wave itself, but also just goes through the the jungle camps. So it's really quick, easy, and efficient farming for a Batrider. He's yeah, now and he's got seven, a bottle seven haste levels with a haste rune. Yep. Doesn't even need yep. the blink dagger at the moment. Just needs his fire flower cooldown. Oh, this Batrider hero, the amount of pressure it puts on supports and just by being off the map with a blink dagger, the amount of pressure it puts on you to farm at night time, it's incredible hero. Mm. It's like one of the only few heroes that can apply kill pressure while showing himself in the lane continuously. So strong. Oh, I'm watching uh, TC here in the middle lane now. Two levels, two full levels above the faceless void seven minutes in. As the Void returns to a lane with a poor man's shield and, and a boots, and he's about to oh. double his CS. <laughs> poor man's shield is right, Toby. <laughs> the correct definition of his play right now. And w what are you really getting in return for this? Now you get a Queen of Pain farming up on the bottom lane, and you've got, well, by the looks of it, just treads and a circlet. So I don't know if this is meant to be an old talisman into a Dagon, trying to get some pick-offs over on here as like maybe Ancient Apparition, but she can't really do that. And an orc is really not going to be as effective either. You've got two heroes that will get BKBs. And you've got another one which doesn't really care if you orc at him. It's a Spectre or just tank it up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm not even sure if the Spectre's presence in this game is going to be necessary. I feel like every fight, what's going to happen is Razor's going to be bigger than everybody else. Barret is going to be bigger than everybody else. So they initiate on, like, the Queen of Pain, who's the most farmed on the enemy team. Or the Naga Siren, because she still has that ultimate potential. Mm -hmm. And then the Earthshaker just follows up with a stun. Spectre clicks one button, the Haunt. And then people will die, and Pain Gaming will use all their spells and ultimates just to get away with the scraps of life points they have. My I don't see this going in Pain Gaming's way any uh, any way at all. They can't even get them given the range for the glimpse or the... They're trying. No, Corona, but he already oh, put his blink dagger. He put his blink dagger. They're going to get a kill, but they commit four players, two ultimates to get that. Yeah. But the blink dagger already arrived for the bat rider. So what did you really achieve there? You killed an offlaner, sure. But you just committed so much for that. And TC is still free farming. And you've also got a Spectre who's still getting a lot of money. And did actually complete up the full earn by now. And TC looks yep. like he's going to go into a drums build. He picked himself up uh, just a bracer for now. And then steals... Here, where's the leap? He doesn't want to use it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling very negative about this. Even though it's 3-1, the way of, uh, of pain. It's just the fact that Nick's assassins, they're getting everything they want for the timings they want. The only yep. thing which is missing is basically like arcane boots and a level 6. Uh, Arcane's for the Earthshaker and a level 6 of Flop and stuff. That's all that's really missing right now. TC has pretty much almost perfect CS. This is this is really, really good, you know. Considering the amount of uh, heat this guy gets a lot, oftentimes, you know, he's, he's still a phenomenal player. And as a carry, he was one of the best going into TI3. So, it's good to see that he's performing well. Even though he has the, a massive upper hand in the matchup, I'm sure he'll be able to perform throughout this game and... Once again, Pain Gaming, I, I don't really see too much of a solution here. Their Naga's only level 6 at 10 minutes into the game when they gave him the, the mass amount of focus. They apply no kill pressure to the Razor, and not to mention this Batrider is not going to be dealt with. At the time, But Ix Mike, he's, he's actually waiting to gank something without a smoke. I feel like he should just be farming the enemy jungle again. He can die 5 more times this game, his game impact is still going to be relevant, because this Queen of Pain, she's not able to push the tower alone, and anytime she does try, somebody will come to the lane to either take, the, take away the Creep Wave, or Ancient Apparition will have level 6 by then and just blast it down. I think the reason Mike was waiting is because he came up, farmed up the stacks, and then triggered his re regeneration rune. So he went up to full, oh, I see. He went up to full okay. life and mana, and they weren't 100% certain what was going on with the Void, because the Void went missing from the lane. They see him up on the top because of the Observer Ward, but it was the Naga Siren that came into mid. So 40R is now an absent hero in that mid, even though Illusions can do some work. And the Disruptor's just trying to soak up a little bit, and that's not the hero they want. No. They want that mid solo down. That's why Mike's gonna Firefly. And he's searching for the Naga Siren. Oh, and they might get somebody. But it seems like they're just gonna catch the Disruptor. But Naga Sleep, it stalls this up. 
Now we can turn the wall. There's no static storm of Marvel Knights. Mike, as well as TC trapped here. The plasma field damage. You're going to scream up with Mike. There's still the Firefly out there. He gets a big burst damage from the, from the uh, Flame Break. Which is buffed up a little bit for the Spectre Horn in. They catch King Red in the tree line. They'll go down to 40 yard. The wall is down, but still Ushed able to reach over the wall of electricity and bring him down. Whitebeard has an Echo Slam too. There's still no backtrack in for the faceless void. And Ush, he's got an isolated player and plants a field which they can't reach it up. The wall will come up as well. And they'll spectral dagger up the hill. TC still a little bit too deep under the T1 tower. But Baga, it, it, his chance of reaching up to TC is next to nothing. So he goes back to the lane, lane and starts farming up. And h and yeah. is almost level 6 while all that was going on. Yep. Just... I, I'm surprised to say Naga Siren has picked up the drums. So that's a really nice pickup for him. He's not as underfarmed as I'd expected, but again, investing that level 1 sleep to no avail in that situation because he still lost the majority of his teammates that were committed Boy. into that fight. He's having a crack at top. He's already leaped up to the cold feet. He's trying to outrun it, and he will be able to do so. Blubber stuff also able to get himself out of the wall, but... Let's get instantly be dragged back in again by the disruptor into the trees. The vortex is slow. I'm down and oh and stuff. There's another leap up. They need some control. He'll get the connection in. The last two's on cooldown for a little bit longer. The wall will come up again. The flame break trying to bounce him back. The firefly is still giving him the vision, but support's coming from TC. Plants the field and the damage into the void. He'll go down with the disruptor getting firefly and the blink lasso. They call the queen of pain. Blink's coming off cooldown right now, but they have enough damage to ensure the kill. The Earthshaker was in fact the one to get it with the fissure. And that's three for the price of one. Going the way of the Sneaky Nicks Assassins. Yeah. The support Rubik's actually picked up some nice levels, being able to witness the kills and, well, I guess he got the majority of the kills he was participating in. So he has his mana boot, 600 gold on top, but again, not sure how how well it's going to keep them in this game. I, I think they're going to lose this top tower relatively easily, even though not right now. This boy's going to come in, he doesn't have Chronosphere, and he's probably just going to have to run away. But if, overall, if like, in, in terms of objectives, I don't see them holding anything when, when Nyx Assassin decide to aggress on him. Yep. Fluff finally cracked his level 6. I think the corpse going to soon nuke him. So Sonic Wave, everything he got. But then again, he's got Cold Feet and the attack of the town. I think Kingra is dead, but the Flame Break bouncing in, yep! You just lost your Queen of Pain for an Ancient Apparition while on top lane. The Void, he actually walked himself over the Fissure Wall and then defensively Chronos. This AA, okay, his ulti's not going to be back up in time. Not unless the Void takes a very long time to get home. Which he doesn't, he time walks down. He's getting back as quick as he can. Mm -hmm. Spectre's at 2.5k gold. Already? Yeah. He was involved in one fight. He didn't even take a single tower yet, but... He's, he's actually got, he's got, he got three kills, one death, one assist on this Spectre. Yeah. Ugh. That's... It's kind of disgusting to hear, because they shut him down fairly well early on. He wasn't getting a lot of CS. Well, you would think so, but once again, like, committing these kind of supports in a Naga Siren in an aggressive trial lane, unless you dominate it super hard, which they didn't, it, it's just a wash lane. As a matter of fact, I would say it hurts the Naga, because Naga is one of the best mid-late game carries, just by how he functions. He pushes in every single wave and starves your own side of the map, because you can't walk out against the Radiance Burn and the Riptide. So, it just, it hurts them so much. Like, this, is, this game, I would say, is actually a prime example of having a decent draft and a good game plan, but lose because you completely mess up the lanes. Literally, all they had to do was not put the Void mid. That Void could have gone safe lane, off lane. That Naga could have gone mid. Queen of Pain could have gone mid. Anybody else could swap, but the Void cannot be mid. Yeah. And they put the Void mid, so. And because of that, now they're having some troubles while on bottom lane. Oosh, the initiation's there. Sonic Wave, the last two from Mike. Mike 88. There's no quad bolting. The Ice Blast is still going to connect to the corporal will die no matter what. Doesn't have a TP. Uh, he's still back up with his own tier 1 tower, but the Rubik dies up on the top lane. The Earthshaker as well as the Razor combining up together. Now it's neither the Storm and an Echo Slam being committed, but they have actually caught up to 4 the up. With the yeah, Blink Dagger and a 4 star, maybe you can't escape. Seconds. 7 seconds, pardon me. Uh, it is same duration all the time, but it's it's just not enough. You can't run away from a Batrider with 4 staff and Blink Dagger without a TP. New player, the Faceless Void is trying to beat down the tier 1 tower, but there's just not enough damage yeah. coming up from this Faceless Void in order to do such a thing. Like, he's still only... Like, he's 16 minutes in for the solo mid Void. Sure, he's got 3.1k net worth, but he's got a stick. Like, he's not even a proper wizard right now. And he's got a, a poor man's shield and treads, that's all.
This is not what you write home about. Especially with a fidget connect like that, you get ice blasted down. This this void's actually probably going to be more useful staying at base. And TP out when the fight's Radiant's bad again, then, then commit his chrono. Very unfortunate situation for Pain. They're getting choked out on their own side of the map without even losing towers. That's that's when you know that your lineup is inferior when it comes to objectives. Radiant because you, you just can't fight under your fallen. own territory. It's worst situation to be in. But nice steal on the Fisher though. Rubik. It's the funnest time to play Rubik is when you steal Fisher or Ice Bat. He's actually got some stuff he can play with. Top lane, go TP coming in from the Spectre. Back to farming with that Relic already up and running and having another 1600 or so gold on her. It's just a matter of time before she gets that Radiance up. And then heroes like Rubik who have been doing a really good job, like you can steal Fisher and all, but once the Hawk kicks in, you can have that burn on both Disruptor and Rubik who are not healthy heroes to start with, especially when Kick Reds just blinked himself in so over aggressively and TC coming he out actually a almost lot of damage. Him. I'm surprised. It was a smart TP out. Yeah, it was. Maybe not the smartest blink up to the high ground when you know <laughs> Sneak Nick's assassins are controlling the map and more than likely still farming up their jungle. But the Batrider's gonna have a crack at bottom lane. There's gonna be a Lasso and an Ice Blast in this void. Blink, Lasso, the Ice Blast on the way in. Perfect positioning, it'll connect. They need a little bit more damage to kill him off and that's why the four staff up. Oh, but that nice, means Mike. the Mike, the Chrono will be committed. There's no point glimpsing him up with the Spectre. Actually haunting in towards the middle lane to kill off the Rubik. While on bottom lane, there's that glimpse finally being used on IX Mike, but his blink dagger came off cooldown by this time, so... The Void commits Chrono, Spectre commits Haunt, but still gets a kill on that middle lane, and that's the full Radiance. As 18 minutes in, the Radiance is up. Yeah. Radiance is up indeed. And then comes Haunt is not available yet, but... He'll be able to fight up against any hero. Like, even, oh, even the same thing, Queen of Pain. Oh, Quap! No! <laughs> She... The she ticking. won't go. The urn's ticking, but Spectre's got a lot of movement speed, man. The Radiance Burn's already kicking in. You got one no, second until the up, blink, though. but... The Spectre's oh, still yeah. winning this. He's got Dagger. The Spectre. I mean, uh, Dagger should the Dagger. Queen. I don't know if that's enough. Oh, it, is. it is. He gets the kill with the Dagger and Void leaps up, but he can't stop that. No. Chase the entire way. Why big and juke it out in the tree line? A DP out with no vision means you can't glimpse him back either. Actually, I have a follow-up from last game. Um, yep. In the break, I did go into a lobby just to test things again. Uh, remember the time when I mentioned about the urn not not stopping the bottle? Yep. That came into play just now again. But uh, basically, bottle and salve and clarity are all the same. They need to, to remove them from ticking. You have to do two, 20 damage before reductions. And urn only does 15, even though it's pure. So, yeah, urn attack. doesn't cancel bottle or Radiant clarity or salve. Okay. That's a nice little thing to, to double check. Fissure. Uh, it's not coming the way of the Disruptor. Raze is already taken to the tower. This Raze is walking around with a full Aghanim Scepter and already having another 860 gold. Once oh my gosh, she's so farmed. Yeah, he's over 10k net worth before the 20 minute mark. And yeah, I, that's And I'm crazy. still waiting for Roshan to be done. Even Fluff and stuff. This guy's walking around with his point booster and closing in on a, on a thousand gold too. So the Aghanim Scepter upgrade for the Ancient Apparition may even arrive at this rate. Uh, before you'll have level 2 on the ultimate. Yep, that's really, really good. Again, they're just starving out the entire map against the side of Pain Gaming. Naga Siren's actually farming decently considering the situation, but she doesn't have enough levels to speak for herself because some of the Siren's still level 1, which means she's pre-level 11. And of course, she went to drums before, and it, it was one of those games where drums is necessary because her sustain is terrible as, as her teammates are getting rolled but she is somewhat close to the Relic. Again though, I'm not too sure if it'll come back in time, as you see the top three net worth dominated by the side of Nyx Assassins. Yeah, they they have this game pretty firmly in the bag unless they throw something absolutely chronically horrendous. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is rather difficult when you've also got a Blink Dagger coming out for the Earthshaker. Oh my like, god. He's, yeah. he's got his jump in available. You have a, a Razor who still actually has three, four bottle charges and sitting at four life. So he has that too. Yeah. Uh, there it is, the smoke. Is it's, it's, it's so futile though. Because even so, they you know try what? and jump the is really, right now. really useless what, what? when it comes to being on a deficit and trying to come back. What is? Orchid Melovinless. <laughs> 
Dude, Orc and Malevolence, like that item, it's the definition of a snowball item. It, it does not help the Queen of Pain come back into the game, ever. Yeah. She needs a BKB this game, and even BKB won't even save her. I think but, the only, but, only hero she could probably pick off for that would be Fluff and stuff, but once he has the Agnums, they won't have that. Kronar are going to be using the Spectre. He's really tanky. He's got a Vip Bruce, they throw the Claw Palti, they throw everything they've got, but with the Ice Blast also coming in, King Red, he gets himself out of range in time. The Void will also be able to TP out. And are they chasing down a little bit further? There's, there's the jumps out, the ultimate being dropped by the disruptor, just trying to stop the fissure from connecting. And they're searching for Baja, and they'll have him too. They'll pincer him in. It's only gonna be a spectre for a Rubik. Not the greatest trade off they've ever made. What the hell is he doing? Oh, he's got spectral dagger. Oh, that's why he's able to walk through the ravine. <laughs> yeah. That took Nyx way too long just to get one kill. Honestly, I feel like the Earthshaker could have could have prevented a lot more heroes getting out of that engagement there. But uh, again, they still maintain total map control, so it's nothing to be too concerned about. As you mentioned with the Roshan, you know their lineup is not very good in the in the pit. I mean, they're good in the pit, but they're not good against Rosh himself. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just going to focus on the objectives, go for the towers with the Agam Scepter. They're taking down this mid tower now, and Ix Mike has been dominating the enemy jungle. So once again, the game is game plan is to Take away the Radiant rations of the enemy the team. Uh, I, uh, I just Radiant have so much sympathy right now. I, I, I want to give him a hug, this faceless void. There's just <laughs> no joy. And they're about to scout out the fact the courier's coming up for a shopping spree too. So the Firefly up. It might actually be worthwhile picking up the uh, courier uh, after he picked up his item if they want to get really greedy. But they killed off anyway. And who was it really for? You actually had 4.8. There was a relic. They could have oh, actually uh, stopped the rally for 40 hours. He's got 4.8k gold on him right now. And no courier I'm for sure three walk over. The only problem is there's a really nice ward placed by Sneaky Nick's Assassins courtesy of 6.82, which will allow the Bad Rider to make any potential pickoffs that come in range. And wow, Payne did something really smart. Stayed on the very left edge, but I think they did still get spotted. I and mean, you can see that in the Yeah, spectrum. it does. The, yeah. It, it sees that far over. They blink themselves away, though. And Mike is Ooh. definitely on the hunt. That's interesting. I didn't realize that ward range is actually that big. It covers the very edge of that tree line. That's that's something. That's it, not an easy ward to de ward as well because of the, the there, is, there is a small gap by this that tiny slither you can walk through. Yeah. But I think you all. can still get spotted though. Looks like the hero sizes might come to play there. Mm. Although like collision size is the same for every Dora hero. Well, that's a nice little steal. And I have the storm for Baja. Whoa! Flip to sun, flip break, vision. Okay, they threw it all. <laughs> but it's gonna be a tier two tower and the Rubik going down. You steal my spell, I steal your life. That's the game here. And they're gonna lose more than this soon, too. Because Spectre's still free farming at the bottom lane. The beauty of Haunt, you go everywhere and anywhere the, hero, the enemy heroes are. So the second your team is ready to initiate, you just trigger that. And Ush just walking around. Actually, what do we got? We got Fluff and stuff with an Oak Club, and uh, we got a Heart. He doesn't. He needs uh, another 1,000 gold until the full Heart's completed over on the Spectre as his next item. But that Courier's walking around with a BKB that belongs to TC. So this Razor, who's coming in towards Roshan, and Roshan is most definitely alive. They're gonna try and have a crack at this. And the BKB arrives at just the right time as well. But they have no vision outside the pit. That's the only downside I'm thinking of this from Nyx Assassins. There's no Observer Ward down. Yeah. Well, you know what this Roche attempt is, though? It's like um, it's like one of those things where, okay, we actually took every tower. Uh, we can keep killing them, but not sure if it's important as they might have a comeback potential with just killing us when we're outside their base. We get caught out. So since there's nothing else to do, we'll just take Roshan. I think that's what this Roshan is. Like, again, you see this. This is not a good Roshan at all. But they're gonna get Aegis out of it and they're probably gonna be able to walk into high ground with it, so that's what they're gonna do. Uh, now Mike gives them the vision in the last moments just in case they are making a run, but so far Payne, they're grouping up like they want to go for a smoke, and uh, Baja has made to pick one up, but there's no courier to fly out to them at the moment. You did at least get your full Radiance over on 40R, so he's now trying to do what uh, I've seen Loda do time and time again with his Naga Sirens, move towards the north, and just control the enemy jungle and control the lane push. It's just, 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 uh, simple. just look for the off lane. It's, uh, oh, he killed Flop and stuff. The illusion only? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Flop was living on the edge of life. I don't know how, how much life points he started with, but normally you would see an AA committing ice blast uh, or something. He was at 10%. Yep. I just Neither looked over towards the side screen. He was at 10% okay. where the Naga illusion came in. Oh, no wonder. Okay. Playing big greedy there. 
Mm. He wasn't even in the pit, so I don't know how he took so much damage. Yeah, for the crack. Space is void. Life hard. Echo Slam should be two minutes. He'll commit the fissure too, because he hit the extra stunt. I didn't see a single backtrack during that. Yeah, it's only at 15% right now. Not the most reliable spell. No. Glimpse gonna go on Mike. He's got Blink Dagger, can't get it off in time. Tries to get himself outside the wall. He'll drop the gem of true side here. Wipe in. Just walks himself in. And she throws a fissure so he can't reach it himself. The Ice Blast gonna keep him here. And that's gonna be a big hit. It's on 40R as well as over on King Red. Quop, uh, Queen of uh, not Queen of Pain. Naga Siren will trigger the ultimate. Allowing yep, them to retreat up towards the, the high ground, but yeah, there's no reason why they can't just come up towards Radiance the high ground because they have TC's Aghanim's ulti attack. here and the full hearts now over on the Spectre. So his life points are going to go through the roof. Yeah, even if Pain RD had all their ultimates and heroes up still, they can't stop this push. Look at Spectre go. Impossible. She just doesn't care. Radiant's Four stop down because you saw the net fallen. coming, so you need to get into a bit more of a nice position. The Void Chrono is still there. The one plus of field removes one third of his life points. And you still got the Aegos Immortal on the Spectre, and he's coming in again. Spectral Dagger's coming off cooldown in a moment. They're burning through the creep wave bit by bit. There's again 40R, there's Radiance on Radiance at the moment. There's a Spectral Dagger still being committed. And White Bib, they'll get the Fissure off, but they're not close enough to get the kill. But the Ice Blast, that's a big Radius. It connects on three of the heroes, but not the one they oh, wanted, man. which was the Naga Siren. But TC just comes high ground. Either Storm's back off cooldown, but they use the fortification. Just for you know and now avoid, I think. he's got it. The Spectral Dagger will connect. That was the Aghanim's upgraded Ancient Apparition Ultimate level two. Yeah, is, is Void dead? Yeah. Oh, he'll live in base. Oh, one more tick, he would have died. Man, they've lost bottom racks, they've lost their combination. They, they can't do anything with this lineup. There goes the melee racks. And the Eye of the Storm from TC is melting through the tier 3 tower. You got Naga Siren running north, because she can't do anything else. She can BT back in a moment, disrupt the ball back into this game. But already the Chrono is going to go from Faceless Void, but he's dying oh inside of his own Chrono with Queen oh of Pain blinks into it. The ulti might be coming up, but TC triggers his BKB. This is over, man. Please, mercy. Throw in the towel. Rocky can't take any more of this. They want to do it. The Spectre Hall will go. Baja goes down to... A, he's actually dying from nothing but Spectre Illusion at the moment. And there it is. The GG call comes off. They're forced back into their base. This game really was over after the, after the top lane was lost. Many pace, man. Toby, if, yeah. I, if I see another Void go mid in competitive Dota, I, I will give myself many pains. <laughs> oh, I, I can't take this, man. That that Void mid, I, I don't know. It, it's it's so blatant the way I see it that this hero, it offers you nothing at the mid lane, which is arguably the most important lane in Dota right now. It it hurts to see that hero go mid. It just hurts. Well, I'm hoping for less pain uh, coming up in our next game. Uh, Hope everyone gets that one. We'll be having ourselves a short break and we'll be back here in a moment's time.